So we're gonna go ahead and break down the dip today. So this movement is extremely multifaceted. It is applicable across a lot of different goals. I love implementing this movement for just a variety of different clients and across a bunch of different spectrums, to be honest. It is super, super diverse in how you're able to actually program it. So love this movement. It is a somewhat difficult exercise though to, to get the hang of and to master because there is such a strength component associated with a body weight dip. Not a lot of people are gonna be able to perform a lot of reps, a lot of volume, much less, you know, like weighted and progressed um, dips. So it's often a good place to start with assisted dips, but before even that, we need to make sure we have the mechanics of the movement down pat. So you want to start with your hand placement. So a lot of people I see get really jammed up whenever they're performing dips because they don't understand how wide they need to be. This is often a, a function of just poor equipment as well. So I've seen dip bars that are incredibly wide, right? So a small woman is not gonna be able to use really wide dip bars. It's not gonna fit her body. It just makes no sense. It's gonna put her in really bad positions. Same thing, I've seen really big guys trying to use very narrow dip bars before. Also does not work. It is gonna beat your shoulder, beat your elbows up long-term, not the best route to go. So you wanna make sure that the handles you're using are actually fitting your body type and your body size. So it's often a good idea to have your hands just outside of your shoulder width. I also like having these semi-pronated handles here, so you can't really see it. These bars aren't exactly parallel, they're a little bit angled, so it just takes a little bit of stress off of the wrist, feels a little bit better as well. So whenever you're performing the dip, I also like to generally start from the top of the movement, perform the eccentric first. A little bit easier to do that. You can find the positions a little bit better. And also you can just kind of like ease into that deeper stretch as well. Starting that eccentric just allows your, your tissue, your muscles to get into the movement with a little bit more integrity versus just trying to like power out of the bottom with especially load. So don't have a step up here, but you wanna start from the top of the movement if you can up here with your shoulder blades down as well. So they're gonna be depressed. You wanna keep yourself upright. As you go through the movement, you want to actually change the angle of your torso to allow your forearms to stay relatively up and perpendicular to the floor. So what that's gonna look like is this. So you can see that my eccentric is very, very slow and controlled. And the reason for that is because you're gonna go through a deep stretch through your pecs here. And you want to make sure that you're not actually gonna put your pecs at any kind of mechanical disadvantage and also any kind of risk. I've seen too many people that have torn pecs from doing heavy dips just because they didn't control that eccentric all the way through to the bottom. Or, or just in general going too heavy. So this is another point that I would like to make with the dip is there is a difference between doing pec focus dips and tricep focus dips. Very, very subtle, but whenever you're doing pec focus dips, you want that torso to drop a little bit as you go through the eccentric, a little bit more than normal. So you can actually fully lengthen your pecs, almost like a decline press. So keeping more of a hollow body position at the bottom, your abs pulled in, your, your sternum here dropped down more towards your hips, rather than like a very upright and arched big chest position, versus a tricep dominant dip, you wanna think more about getting elbow flexion right here and as much as you possibly can around that elbow. So you're actually gonna almost think more about pushing your elbows back versus dropping your torso down into the stretch. So pec focused dip would look a little bit more like this, versus a tricep focus dip is gonna be more here. Get the shakes too. So that's another thing. You're probably gonna shake a decent amount while doing dips. But those are the, the probably biggest differentiating factors between pec and tricep focus. 
a little bit difficult for a lot of people to master. Most people won't even be able to master a dip enough to be able to, to even worry about whether they're doing pec or tricep focus. They're just gonna be worried from, about getting from point A to point B in the easiest way possible. So the mistakes I see people make most often when performing any kind of dip. So the first one is just trying to keep too much of an upright torso position. So you're not gonna have anywhere for those shoulders to go if you're trying to stay really upright. So with doing that, it's gonna look a lot like this and it will jam you up so you can't even get a lot of range of motion without putting it all into your wrists, elbows and shoulders. So here, trying to keep an upright torso. Like it just, it just feels like garbage and a lot of people try to do that Sometimes it feels a little bit easier to try and keep your torso upright, hyperextend your back, and almost like seesaw your way through a dip. But that's not the best way to go about it. Again, drop that torso a little bit, drop that chest a little bit, pec focus, hollow body, tricep focus, same general idea, but you just wanna think about driving those elbows backwards rather than like torso up and chin up like that. That is a bad bet, not gonna end very well for your joints. Another one I see, is a very shallow range of motion. So when you're performing a dip, it, it is always best to get as much range of motion as you can for whatever variation you are trying to go through, whether it's pec or tricep. It's still gonna be a full range of motion though. So again, tricep, you wanna get a full range of motion through your elbow joint. Pec focus, you wanna get a full range of motion through that, that scapular retraction, through that, that shoulder abduction and also just general extension there so kind of like a mix of both but the big thing is just a full range of motion because if you're trying to go with very shallow reps you're gonna put a lot of stress on your elbows which is where I think dips get a pretty bad rap from people just beating their elbows up with too excessive loads so what that's gonna look like is this and then I'll perform a full range of motion dip right after that just to give you another example so shallow range Very elbow intensive. And then full range makes a big difference there. So then the last really big mistake that I see is going to be people who cannot maintain their trunk and in positional integrity out of the bottom of the rep and through the concentric. So they might be able to control their positioning all the way through the eccentric, all the way into the stretch, but then as soon as they go into the concentric, they just break down because they don't have enough strength to get back to the top of the movement. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that, that you maintain and, and focus really hard on what your body and torso are doing, even around your triceps, your shoulders, your pecs, because that is actually gonna directly impact what is being targeted and also where the majority of the tension and the stress is going. So what that will look like is starting from the top, getting a, a perfect eccentric end, but then again, a breakdown through the concentric once the, the failure points start to add up. So here, top of the movement. And then a breakdown. So a lot of people like to jolt their chest up like that. So here, breakdown, right? So that's a very, very common thing that you'll see, not super optimal. Again, try to keep that hollow position. I'll just repeat that over and over again. Hollow position, chest down, keeping your abs tight and tucked in there and try and drive your shoulders down and make your pecs contract. So regressions and progressions next. There are gonna be a few different ways that you can actually regress a, a dip based on what you're trying to focus on. So what the bias is, right? So, if you're focusing on pecs, you would regress more towards a, a flat dumbbell press. That, that is going to be the, the base of what the, the press is meant to be. So think of a dip in that case, is almost like a decline press. Whereas a tricep focused dip is gonna revert almost more towards a tricep extension, which is what the base would be for a tricep focused dip. So, the easiest way to just scale down the intensity of a body weight dip is going to be adding some assistance. So because this is just the easiest way for me to do it right now and to show, I'm gonna go with a band. You can also use a machine to regress that as well. So machine, I've seen seated dips that I really, really like, 
I've also seen um, pin loaded machine assisted dips where you're actually performing the dip just with something under your feet, under your knees to assist you and guide you through the movement versus again, going back to the seated, you're actually sitting down, you're pressing something down, you're pressing the handles down and the, the stack is moving against you. So somewhat different, same pattern, just a little bit different mechanisms there for how they work, but band assisted here, what you wanna do, you wanna first make sure that you don't snap yourself in the face of the band. So I would recommend actually putting your knees on the band and then if you get really good and comfortable with the band, you can actually put your foot on it. I would start with the knee though. So easiest way for me to do this would actually be to start from the top. So I can go here and then I can get up, put both knees on. Just a little bit easier to start from this position. Some people still can't really get into that position very well though. So from this, you're gonna perform an, a, just a normal dip. So here, all the way down and then up. And that band is assisting out of the bottom, which is gonna be the most problematic area of the movement for most people. Get that band assistance, it will actually almost slingshot you out of the bottom. So it is really, really great for people who are struggling with body weight dips and to control, like what we were mentioning with the last mistake of breaking down going into the concentric. Band assistance is awesome for people who are struggling with that. And then a, another really easy regression from a dip is just the bench dip. So bench dip is gonna be a very similar pattern. You're still moving your body through space, but you're gonna have your feet out in front of you in almost an L position. Sometimes people like to put their feet flat on the ground. So feet flat on the ground is going to be even more regressed. I'll start with my feet up on a bench though, because that's a little bit closer to what a dip movement is gonna be. Only issue here is you have to be really cautious with what's happening with your shoulders and your elbows. For people that have shoulder, elbow problems, I wouldn't really recommend this variation just because it can kind of jam you up if you don't have the mobility required to get into those deep positions at the bottom. Luckily, I actually do. I've never had a problem with bench dips. So this is a decent movement for me to actually throw in as a regression or as just some, some kind of supplemental dip focused movement. So, Make sure that the bench is far enough out to allow you to actually get deeper into that, that bottom part of the range of motion here. So here, you want your hands to be on the end of the bench. You want the height to be relatively similar. Also, as you descend into the eccentric, you wanna make sure that you keep your body relatively close to that bench that you're on with your hands. You don't wanna to drift too far forward it's gonna put a lot of stress on your shoulders and on that shoulder extension. Not a lot of people actually have that mobility. So you wanna stay relatively close. You wanna think about pushing your elbows back. So this is gonna be a lot more tricep focused than pec focused just in nature. So here, stay close, get as much range of motion as you can, and then all the way back up. So you don't wanna to push too far and have your shoulders roll forward in that joint. You wanna think about keeping those shoulders back and retracted throughout the entire time. So back, retract, they're gonna elevate a little bit just naturally and then extend. And as you extend, you wanna depress your shoulders as well just to get the full range of motion there. So now on to progressions of dips. So the easiest and most simple progression is just going to be a weighted dip. You can do this a few different ways. I actually like using chains, so throwing chains around my shoulders. Uh, just for simplicity of the video though, I am going to use a belt. So what you wanna do is you wanna use some kind of belt, whether it's a chain belt, whether it's a Velcro belt, you can use a shoestring. It doesn't even really matter as long as you can loop a plate or a kettlebell or a dumbbell around it securely and have that drape between your legs during the movement. So you can see how it's just kind of draping between my legs. This actually works very well because as I descend into the dip, it is going to kind of center me and pull me into the correct position, which is nice versus using really, really heavy chains. It actually pulls you off course and makes it much more of a pec focused dip, whether you want it to or not. So I do like weighted dips. They are much more comfortable than even something like a pull up or a weighted pull up would be. These just feel good. They feel natural. So. This is a very basic progression. Have it draped here and then just perform, again, normal dips just with the added load. You just wanna be, be careful 
If you do allow yourself to get off position whatsoever, that load is gonna start swinging. So you have to really control your body positioning here, much more than even with a normal dip. So here, Easy enough. Okay, so the most advanced progression of a dip is going to be anything using unstable handles. So, first one that I always think of is like a ring dip. So, ring dips are awesome for gymnastics, they're awesome for just general body control and strength. You have TRX dips, so same general idea as a ring dip. What we have here are band suspension dips. So this adds in a completely different variable, which is the oscillation as well. So you have the independent movement here. So you have to control your body through space, just like a ring dip. You can't rely on a solid structure like parallel bars, but you're also having the oscillating factor of the band lengthening and shortening as you are actually going through the movement and it is kind of playing along with the tension that you're putting into it. So it almost is fighting you the entire time that you're doing or that you're doing the rep. So with someone who is really good at body weight dips, they might go into a weighted dip, very seamless progression, but to go from a weighted dip to a band suspension dip like this requires a pretty sizable advancement and jump. So only the strongest, most advanced people with dips are gonna be able to do something like this. Wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but if you can nail it, it is a pretty awesome tool to have in your toolbox. So the biggest thing that you want to make sure of is the band tension being appropriate. It can't be too strong, otherwise you're not gonna actually get any oscillation effect. It can't be too, um, too lax, otherwise you are going to just go all the way to the floor and you're, not, you're just gonna be doing push downs with the band. It has to be just right. You have to make sure that it is the right appropriate width across. So they can't be too narrow, they can't be too wide, etc. So about shoulder width is a good bet here. Make sure you don't get snapped in the face, ease yourself in, but we're gonna go ahead and try and perform these and I will see how I do. Let's hope that nothing goes wrong here. All right, easing into the movement. So you can see, they are very difficult. Um, it's gonna be hard to lock your elbows out at the top, just because if you lock out, the bands might kind of snap around your arms and really make you unstable. You wanna keep the bands almost in front of your elbow and forearm here so you can control it a little bit. Those are difficult, very hard, I'm glad I didn't die. But again, very advanced variation. Most people are gonna be doing very, very well, living between the band assisted dip, the body weight dip, and the weighted dip. But for those few people, few brave souls who will be able to, to master a band suspension dip, give it a try and you will be a true, true master of the dips. Some final thoughts on dips before we wrap this up. So I obviously am a huge fan of dips. I have my own biases, but I also understand that it's probably not gonna be the best movement for everybody. A lot of people are going to get much more effectiveness and efficiency out of other pressing movements, whether it's for pecs or for triceps. So I understand that. I also understand that it is a little bit more injurious than other movements might be. And that comes from just the deep stretch that it's taking the pecs through. So there actually is not a, a terminal end range of motion like there might be with the bench press. So the propensity and the risk of tearing a pec or straining a pec is actually gonna be a good amount higher than with other movements. So I do have to caveat that even though I love this movement, I think it is a great movement for the majority of people. It doesn't come without its downsides and potential risks. So having acknowledged that, there are a lot of things that we can do to mitigate those risks. So first thing is obviously making sure that you're working well within the confines of your abilities. Also the restrictions and limitations of your own mobility as well. Making sure that we do warm up properly before dips 
So doing things like potentially even light cable flies, like pec deck, light other presses, things like that, if you're gonna be using dips as a main movement, or if it's an accessory movement, just understanding that you know you might need to limit a little bit the range of motion that you're using. I'm not one for limiting range of motion artificially, but whenever it comes to something like this where there might be some, some risk vectors that pop up just because of that range of motion, I do think it's prudent to, to mention that and also to stay ahead of it. So that is about it for the dip. Again, love this movement. I think it is great to add into pretty much any goal that you might have, whether it's strength, mobility, hypertrophy, whatever you want. Um, but I also do understand that there are potential problems that might that might pop up from doing it either too frequently, too heavy, with poor form, whatever. It's it's not perfect. So having said that, starting next week, we are actually going live with the P2 Training Club with this subscription service. Very, very excited. Um, emails were sent out to all of the early subscribers and the volunteers who have graciously helped out with this trial period. So if you are curious about wanting to continue, I would highly advise reaching out to me, reaching out to our admin email or one of the coaches that you know and respect and getting a little bit more additional information about how you can do so. So thank you. Very excited to continue doing this, continue to provide more value, make this a lot better, increase some production quality, potentially take this out of my home office. And again, just translate all that value back to people who are subscribing and the members. So thank you again. And next week we will be pulling it back to lower body training with a little posterior chain focus.